Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So today we're gonna give a little overview about a guy that I was debating and his name is al Masih something here So this guy was telling this is how we can disprove the Trinity and disprove the Bible and Christianity and how we can debate with uh, the Christians and they have many ways of lying so we're gonna try to show you these ways and show you the deception and if you know any, any way where I can uh, post the threads there then I'll probably make a thread in this one and to show how to debate a Christian and how the easy way and how the deception works and to show how to respond uh, with the Quran by this so here we're gonna see that first uh, there, there are, he is saying uh, he is saying this thing here okay and uh, so here we can see um, in John 10 30 of the Bible it says I meaning Jesus and the Father are one so many Christians say that this proves that Jesus is uh, God you know uh, and this and they, they say that this verse proves the Trinity but there's something missing here which is the Holy Spirit and so many Christians say that Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father are one while others saying they are separate but they are still each one as God so they have different doctrines in this and, they got, and this of course is confusing and this is how much it gets confused so what Jesus meant by here they did not mean the Trinity because if you look more Jesus says may they my disciples be one and may they be in you as I was in you and you were in me meaning to God right so they say may they also be in us so that doesn't mean that oh they have to be in us meaning that they are also becoming gods this is not true <coughs> and see, similarly here Spirit of God can mean angel, angel of God, you know, if you say to someone he's angel of God or the slave of God, meaning the slave belongs to God and, and God created him, just like slave of God. You cannot say that um, the slave is part of God, okay? So now even here, we can continue going. They usually say that Jesus says, I am the first, I am the last, and there is no God besides me. Uh, when you actually look in Isaiah 44 uh, verse 6 of the Bible, it says This is what Yahweh is talking about Yahweh not Jesus Yahweh is different than Jesus because basically Yahweh was the one who sent Jesus and when Jesus was crucified according to Hebrews uh, Chapter 5 verse 7 in the Bible Jesus prayed to Yahweh to save him from death and So this means that Yahweh was still above he was not in Jesus So Jesus cannot be basically praying to himself, right? So this is what Yahweh the king of Israel and his redeemer uh, meaning Jacob Yahweh of armies says I am the first and I am the last and besides me. There is no God <clears throat> And these will try to uh, fool you in many ways and uh, Tell you for example the hadith about Surat al-Ahzab which is by various scholars and narrators are weak you know that there was extra verses in Surah Al-Hazab that are not found in the Quran today and we can say that this hadith is weak uh, we can see uh, here that this hadith is weak according to Abdullah and commenting on the narration of Yazid the chain is weak because of the weakness of Yaz uh, Yazid bin Abi Ziyad right and you can see here Ibn Hajar says Da'if when he became old his memory suffered and this is the book you know Sheikh Al Bani, Taif Hadith of An Nawi Riyad al Salihin. But they will keep repeating the question, of course, because they have nothing else to say. So um, they also say that how there is not nowhere in the Quran found that Ismail is called a prophet. When you actually look, Ismail and Abraham both prayed in the Quran, it's found in the Quran, the story that um, they have prophethood in their descendants. In Quran chapter 37, verse 98 to 112 Allah says and they attended for him Abraham a plan this is before he had any children and before Abraham was married basically uh, when the pagans and his father intended to plot against him and to burn him right and basically after Allah saved him he got you know he got married to Sarah she could not bear kids he got married to Hagar Hagar uh, brought him kids the first born son meaning Ismail and Isaac came afterwards from Sarah I planned but we made him uh, debase and then he said indeed I will go to where I am ordered by my Lord He will guide me my Lord grant me a child from among the righteous And they will usually say that the righteous here means Isaac because Isaac was referred to as righteous Which is uh, totally wrong because Ismail 
was also referred to as righteous and I'll explain through the video more. So we gave him good tidings of a fair forbearing son, meaning Ismail, and when he reached with him the age of exertion, he said, O oh my son, indeed I have seen in a dream that I must sacrifice you. So see what you think, he said, O oh my father, do as you are commanded, you will find me if Allah wills. Okay, we have a, let me see, I think there's something happened to this computer. By the way, I forgot to mention, you can find this debate in this video that I made, it's Christian Prince Destroys Muhammad Hijab. Okay, it is in this one. And this video was made in uh, November 7, 2019. And so he also quotes about Ibn Kathir. Uh, about uh, how he says that Paul is in the Quran. And Ibn Kathir himself says that the, 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 the thing he quoted from narrations is weak. Ibn Kathir himself, you know, he says... Um, he stated his methodology in his book by saying we are not mentioning we, we are not mentioning from the Israelites except what is permitted by the lawmaker to be reported what is not contradicting the book of Allah and the Sunnah of his prophet it is the part that could neither be confirmed as true or denied we mentioned the weak hadith to simplify that we memorize that we summarized in our book or to clarify something unclear which is stated in our Islamic jurisprudence. We mention it just as an adornment, not as an evidence or something to rely on. So clearly you cannot rely on um, not non authentic hadith and weak hadith and Israelite uh, you know hadiths which is narration from Jews and Christians. What is reported as authentic or sound and what is weak we clarify it as being a weak hadith. So they clearly mention these as a uh, weak hadith. Now going back to Ismail and Isaac who was the one to be sacrificed. To clarify also in the Quran, in Quran chapter 2 verse 136 Allah says, Say O believers we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham, Abraham's prophet and Ishmael. Okay so Allah revealed to Ismail also which means Ismail is a prophet. And Isaac, okay, Allah revealed to Isaac, which means Isaac is a prophet. And Jacob, okay, Jacob is a prophet and well as well. And the descendants, which means, uh, J uh, you know, yeah, uh, uh, Joseph, uh, uh, Yusuf, which is a prophet, and the descendants of Jacob, meaning the Israelite prophets. And what was given to Moses, okay, meaning the Torah, and Jesus, the gospel, and what was given to the prophets from their Lord all the prophets who has been revealed to the prophets from the Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. So going back to the Quran chapter 37 verse 98 to uh, verse 112 Allah says okay so when afterward you know and indeed it was it will go to where I am ordered by my Lord he will guide me my Lord grant me a child from among the righteous. So Abraham was saying, okay, grant me a child because he has no children. So we gave him good tidings of a forbearing boy. Okay. And when he reached with him the age of exertion, he said, oh, my son, indeed, I have seen in a dream that I must sacrifice you. So see what you think. He said, oh, my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me if Allah wills of the patient. So this child is uh, given the uh, title patient. Now the thing is, every prophet is patient, but some weren't given the title as patient. Um, all prophets, for example, they uh, speak to uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah speaks to them. Like Noah, for example, he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah spoke to him, but he was not given the title Kalimullah. He was not given the title the one who spoke to God. Uh, Abraham, for example, is called the friend of Allah, although we, uh, Khalilullah, right? Which means that it does not mean that only Abraham was called that. Um, Prophet Muhammad SAW was called, for example, Habibullah, which, is, which means the one beloved to Allah, which does not mean that Allah hates the other prophets. For example, every uh, prophet is called the messenger of Allah, which means he shares the message of God. Now we as people, regular humans, we are not prophets, but we also share the, share the message of Allah, but we are not called messengers of Allah or prophets of Allah. So, and when they both submit, and when they had both submitted and he put him to the ground on his forehead, 
We called him, O Abraham, you have, you, have, you have fulfilled the vision. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. Indeed, this was a clear trial, and we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. And we left for him favorable mention among the later generations, peace, up, be, uh, peace upon Abraham. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. Indeed, he was of our believing servants. And we gave to him good tidings of Isaac, a prophet from among the righteous. So now Isaac is mentioned, the good tidings. So how did the good tidings come? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed when he uh, when the angels came, they gave Sarah a glad tidings mentioning that she will have Isaac, a prophet, uh, from among the righteous. So both Ismail and Isaac are from the righteous. Ismail is included as a prophet in this verse as well. He received revelations from Allah. Quran chapter 4 verse 163, Allah says, Indeed we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, and we revealed to Noah, a prophet, and the prophets after him. And we revealed to Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob, the descendants, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon. And to David we gave the book of Psalms. So Ismail is clearly mentioned with the prophets. Quran chapter 2 verse 127 and mentioned when Abraham was raising the foundations of the house and with him Ismail saying both of them were saying our Lord meaning both of them were saying our Lord accept this from us indeed you are the hearing the uh, the known our Lord so our means both of them were saying our Lord and make us Muslims in submission to you and from our descendants a Muslim nation in submission to you and show us our rights and accept our repentance indeed you are the accepting of repentance and the merciful our Lord and send send among them a messenger now both of them again they're saying our Lord send among them meaning our offspring meaning Ab uh, Abraham's offspring and Ismail's offspring our um, among them, among their descendants, a messenger from themselves. So this clearly proves that Prophet Muhammad SAW was a messenger since he was sent from the line of Ismail. Who will recite to them your verses and teach them our offspring, the book, and wisdom, and purify them. Indeed, you are exalted, might and means. So the kid that was being sacrificed said, you will find me among the patient. Which means Ismail. Quran chapter 21 verse 85, Allah says, and mention Ismail and Idris. And Dul Kifil all were of the patient. So before Abraham was being persecuted by his people, and or he was like you know he was going to be punished by his people. This is before he was married. But when he got married, he, Allah gave him the first son, and the name was not mentioned at first here. Okay, when Allah says, um, uh, "My Lord grant me," when Abraham, Abraham said, "My Lord grant me a child from among the righteous," so we gave him good tidings of a forbearing boy. Okay. And both Ismail and Ishaq were called the righteous, but one of them was only called the patient, which says, you will find me if Allah wills of the patient, which means Ishmael. And then afterwards, the ulama have said the Bashara, meaning the good tidings, come before the next boy is born. Okay. Which meaning Isaac was the next boy born, so he wasn't the one uh, sacrificed. And for example, he gave me an example here. He said that you Muslims say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, meaning Allah ar-Rahman and rahim are three, proves the Trinity. This is basically ignorant and false because Allah says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the ar-Rahman ar-Rahim are the attributes and characteristics of Allah. But according to Christianity, they say in Arabic, بسم الأبي والابن وروح القدس. They have a وا in the middle. The وا separates them. We say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We don't say بسم الله والرحمن والرحيم. Then that would mean there's three gods. But this is not true. They Christians say بسم الأب in the name of the Father والابن and the uh, Son وروح القدس and the Holy Spirit, which means these people are separate. These people are three, and they are not a characteristics of one God. And you can clearly see that Jesus says, the Father is greater than I. Now, why do you call me God? Only God is good. He does not know the hour, only the Father knows the hour. So you can see different characteristics and uh, they cannot be one and they cannot be the same because they have different attributes, different characteristics, different personalities, different power. For example, Jesus called upon his Father to save him from death. Uh, and he, according to the Bible, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Uh, so this means that Jesus did not have the power and the ability and the Jews were about to stone him as well and he hid himself. 
he could not basically make a wall between him to protect himself from the stones. So this shows that the knowledge of Jesus and the Father is not the same. So there are differently different knowledge, different characteristics, different abilities, different personalities. Okay, uh, the Father, for example, does not sleep. Jesus, we find in the Bible that he was on the boat and he was sleeping. So basically, afterwards, he mentions that the Quran does only mentions three prayers, which is wrong, like, like very, very wrong. And he says, "Aqim al-Salat." You know, for example, he uses this phrase "Aqim al-Salat" here, "Wa Aqim al-Salat." And then he used "Wa Sabbih bihamdi Rabbi ka qabla tulu al-shamsi wa qabla ghurubiha." Or "Min ana al-layli wa Sabbih." Right? He uses "Wa Sabbih" here is referring to that "Sabbih" here means praying, "Wa Aqim al-Salat." Right? And then he says, you know, for example, okay, look, this is the proof that there are three prayers, which is basically like ignorance and uh, not true. And here he says that I, I basically mentioned to him, okay, so he says the three prayers. He's referring to the prayer of the Subh, the Fajr. Um, أول النهار قبل طلوع الشمس and صلاة المساء في آخر النهار meaning the عشاء prayer is in the end of the day عند غروب الشمس or I think I can't really see this بعد it's عند غروب الشمس so yeah he's mentioning صلاة المساء meaning صلاة المغرب and صلاة الليل في أول الليل meaning the صلاة العشاء and he's saying oh look see Allah made obligatory upon you three prayers um, if he's mentioning, okay, there is a Fajr prayer, Salat al-Subh and Salat al-Maghrib and Salat al-Masa, meaning the Isha. Okay, what about this? Allah says, Hafidhu ala salat, Hafidhu ala salawat, wa salat al-Wusta wa qumu lillahi qanitin. As-salat al-Wusta here, meaning the middle prayer. Okay, so let's come. There are five prayers. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Okay, Fajr and Dhuhr are two. Maghrib and Isha are another two. What is between them? Asr prayer. Okay. So basically here we can see that Salat al-Wusta is Asr. So, oh look, there's not three prayers. There's also Salat al-Asr. And, and Abi Ishaq and Al-Hadith and Ali Qal was, was Salat al-Wusta, Salat al-Asr. Salat al-Wusta, the middle prayer meaning is the Asr prayer. And so he says, so Ibn Ishaq now became a true narrator. Basically, he did not read it properly because here it does not say Ibn Ishaq. It says, I'm Abi Ishaq. Basically, he did not read it properly. He can't read it. He's just basically rushing through it. Um, so now, I put him a verse. فَسُبْحَانَ حِينَ تُمْسُونَ وَحِينَ تُصْبِحُونَ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَشِيًا وَحِينَ تُظْهِرُونَ صلاة الظهر. Okay. Subhanallah here is used for prayer uh, because when a person is praying he actually basically glorifies Allah in his prayer and he does hamd meaning he first reads recites Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen or he says Rabbana Walak Alhamd when he raises up this is referring to not basically like this regular tasbih is referring to the prayers and that after the times of the prayer after a person finishes prayers he also does tasbih in these times as well so he says here uh, if you keep going, and basically the term when they say, basically look at his name. His name is Al Masih here. Which type of Masih? Which Messiah? Because in the Bible, Cyrus the Great, which was a pagan, he was called the Messiah, um, which means the Anointed One. So it does not literally mean God, or else they'll be calling Cyrus as God as well. You know, many people were referred as Messiah, meaning the anointed one. The high priest is called the anointed priest, you know, the Messiah priest. God tells in Elijah to anoint two different men as kings of their people. Okay, so basically Messiah means the anointed one, does not have to refer to uh, God. So basically he actually also says that in John 10.30 of the Bible, it says that when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, he did not mention the Holy Spirit, which disproves the Trinity. Um, and this is a contradiction to this forgery. First John chapter five verse seven. All Christian uh, scholars say it's an interpolation, meaning uh, forgery was added in later. Okay, it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. But 
here it mentions in John 10.30 which contradicts John, John 10.30 which says Jesus says I and the Father are one he forgets to mention the Holy, Holy Spirit here your, your God gave a clear answer in the other verse he did not give a clear answer so it is confusing people and if he was mentioning that uh, I and the Father are one but th this is wrong because the three are one the two meaning Jesus and the Father are half you know 0.5 they are not all one so to be all one there must be the holy spirit and all those are one and he's trying to say that i'm totally wrong that all these evidences with weak narrations uh say it is ishaq right in the commentary and he's saying some said he was ismail uh yes but those people who said it was ishaq were all basically um weak narrators and the stronger the lean the stronger proof and no muslim will say that it is Isaac was being sacrificed. They all say it's Ismail because we have strong evidence from strong narrators and transmitters that it was Ismail who was the sac one going to be sacrificed. So he's saying, oh, subhanAllah does not mean Arabic to pray. Yes, it actually does. And you basically prove yourself to be a liar because here in this, um, if you go back here, when he was mentioning that there are, you know, according to the Quran, there are three prayers. He mentions وَأَقِمَ الصَّلَاةِ and he mentions وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهِ So the speech here, exalt your Lord, which means to pray. So he basically busted himself, they tried to change topic, or maybe he was trying to run away, or maybe they, he busted himself, you know. And also I showed him all the tafsirs who say This verse is saying that it is بِأَنَّهُ إِسْمَعِلْ That he is Ismail They all say Ismail alayhi salam هو الصحيح And this is the most authentic And all of them, all these scholars Sa'id bin Jubayr, Ibn Abbas, it is Ismail uh, Ibn Abbas also says that it is Ismail um, that it is Ishaq, and the Jews are lying because they are here. He's just proving them that he's, it's not Isaac who was uh, sacrificed. And Mujahid also says, the one who is going to be sacrificed, Ismail. Mujahid said he is Ismail. You know, his other said who is Ismail. And the one who Muhammad ibn Ka'ab. Right, and that's what uh, Muhammad bin Ka'ab uh, used as evidence that it is Ismail. Athbat it is more trustworthy, more correct, and more strong in chain narrations. So basically, the view is that it was Ismail, and this is the most correct view. He also mentioned that the word Siddiq does not mean. Um, does not mean truthful. Um, if we see a hadith in Bukhari, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليكم بالصدق فإن الصدق يهدي إلى البر وإن البر يهدي إلى الجنة. If the person continues to be uh, truthful, حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا. He will be written, uh, you know, Allah will write for him, and you know, he will basically make him. He will call him by the name صديقا. صديقا. Right, so which means truth. So Prophet was saying you should be truthful because the truth uh, guides to goodness, and goodness guides to paradise. And the person who continues to be truthful until he is written, uh, he is made a title. Uh, Allah will call him by title as truthful. So here he was saying that according to the Quran, here Isaac is in verse uh, 112, and we gave him good tidings of Isaac a prophet from among the righteous so we're saying clearly that Isaac was called the righteous here when both actually Isaac and Ismail were called, were called righteous but Isaac was not given the uh, characteristics of patient Ismail was given the characteristics of patient in all, uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran chapter 37 verse 100 to 102 Allah says my lord Abraham says my Lord grant me a child from among the righteous. So we gave him good tidings of a forbearing boy, uh, which was the one 
that he was sacrificed. So what do you think? He said, Oh my father, Ismail said, Oh my father, do, do as you are commanded. You will find me if Allah wills of the patient. In Quran chapter 21, verse 85 to 86, Allah says, And Ishmael and Elisha, and Elisha and Jonah and Lot, all of them we preferred over the worlds, and we admitted them into our mercy. Indeed, they were of the righteous. So Ismail was also given the term righteous and patient, as we referred to the verses before. And even we can say that Noah called to his Lord, spoke to Allah and said, My Lord, indeed my son is of my family, and indeed your promise is true, and you are the most just of judges. He said, Oh no, indeed he is not of your family. So Allah was talking to him. Indeed he is the one whose work was other than righteous. So basically he, they, he did speak to Allah, you know, speak, spoke to Allah and Allah spoke to him, but it was, wasn't given the word, uh, the title Kalimullah like Moses, which means the one who spoke to uh, Allah or to God. So basically the good tidings that was referred to is Isaac. Isaac was called the good tidings, which was after Abraham, uh, which was after Ismail. Um, which means here we can see that in Quran chapter 11 verse 70 to 74. But when he saw, when Abraham saw their hands, the angel's hands not reached, reached uh, for the food for it. He distrusted them and felt from them apprehension. They said, fear not, we have been sent to the people of Lot. And his wife, meaning Sarah, the wife of Abraham, was standing and she smiled. Then we gave her good tidings of Isaac and after Isaac, Jacob. She said, woe to me, shall I give birth while I am an old woman and this my husband is an old man. Indeed, this is an amazing thing. So basically, you can see that Abraham and Sarah were old, basically, you know, and they were, Sarah was barren, but uh, Allah uh, gave her good news, uh, good tidings of Isaac, which means this is before Isaac came, but the angel said that you will have him, have Isaac in the future. Uh, so basically, this is the good tidings, and the good tidings, um, uh, which means that Ishmael was the one who was going to be sacrificed and not... Uh, Isaac, because Isaac, the good tidings of Isaac came after uh, the sacrifice in the Quran and the ulama have said that the Bashara, meaning the good tidings, comes after, afterwards. So this means that uh, Ishmael was the one who sacrificed. And he basically says that the spirit of God, you know, a spirit from God, is God's spirit, meaning God as well. She's trying to refer to a holy uh, spirit and he's trying to show, oh, look, the Quran says that. Well, here in Quran, chapter 15, verse 29, Allah says, Allah said to the angels, And when I have proportioned him, meaning Adam, and breathe into him of my created soul or spirit, then fall down to him in prostration. Uh, this does not mean that Adam is God. And similarly in the Bible, it says that God blew into the nostrils of Adam the breath of, li the, the breath of life, meaning the spirit of life. Does that mean that the part that God breathed into his nostrils, part of God which makes Adam half God, half, hu half human? That's basically messed up. He basically says again, breathe into him, of, meaning Adam of my created soul. He says, does not mean that Adam is the spirit of God. Well, similarly with Jesus, does not mean that he is the spirit of God because God said that Jesus is a spirit from him, meaning a spirit created from God. And everyone basically is the slave of God, meaning a slave from God, which does not literally mean that, or a spirit from God, which means God created him and blew into him, which does not mean that he is a, a spirit of God, right? Ruhun minhu does not mean spirit of God. It means, it means spirit created from God. Now, why did Jesus, why was Jesus called the word of God? As we said before, each prophet was given a title, uh, all prophets spoke to God and God spoke to them uh, while they were they all weren't given the title Kalimullah meaning the one who spoke to God uh, except for Moses so each prophet was given a title that others were not given does not mean that they are not part of it now the word of God what happened is it changed during time when the Christians started to say that the word of God is uh, is uncreated um, this is actually false because the, the word of God, meaning the Quran, yes, it's uncreated. But basically when you 
um, the meaning of the word of God means what God says. So, for example, when God created the universe or when he created something, he would say be and it becomes. So the word he said is be. So this word is kun, meaning a word from God. God creates people with one word. So it's very easy. So everyone basically is a word of God, meaning he's created with this word be. And, and here it says in Quran chapter 3 verse 59 Allah says indeed the example of Jesus to Allah in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam He created him from dust then he said to him be and he was So the both Adam and Jesus were created with this word be and they were And they were created from dust meaning that they were basically regular humans They were not, they don't have anything to do with uh, God so this means that Jesus was created and the word of God is be and he was so be meaning Adam when Allah created Adam he said be and he created Jesus he said be and they, were, they became so this proves that Jesus was called the word of God كلمته بالمعنى and word from God which means be so afterwards the Christians confused this so God said be which means the word of God is be and Jesus became and basically Adam became as well and basically Quran chapter 66 verse 12 Allah says so uh, when Allah blew into Adam from his spirit he also blew into Mary from his spirit and the example of Mary the daughter of Imran who guarded her chastity so we blew into her garment or into her through our angel and she received in um, words of her Lord so she believed in the words of her Lord, meaning the promise of her Lord, what he, what he brought to her. Because when the angels came to her, he says that Allah gives you glad tidings of such and such, such and such. So the angel was not speaking from his own word; he was speaking from the word of Allah, of God, uh, and his scripture, and was of devout obedience. So when she, you know, guarded her chastity, so blew into her uh, from, from our spirit. Okay. Um, so we blew into her from our spirit and basically this is how Jesus came to life so I basically was saying that all Muslims disagree and then I said okay but similarly Christians have different views you have Roman Catholics they believe for example that additional um, the, the book of Siraj is not found in the Protestant Bible but is found in the Roman Catholic Bible uh, so they basically have differences as well. They say all oh, this the Protestants say this should not be in the Bible The Roman Catholics include it in their Bible and they also have different views on the Trinity and the Unitarians Don't believe that Jesus is God don't even believe in the Trinity and Jehovah's Witnesses is the same So if he said here Waruh and Min means a spirit from him yes, because Allah says to Adam فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ He said to the angels if I make Adam and I blow into him from my spirit okay so a spirit from him Ruhan Min Jesus called also Ruhan Min meaning a spirit from him yes because God blew into him like he did to Adam from his spirit okay if you say to someone you are the slave of God you know if God says he is my slave you know I created him he is my spirit you know, I create a spirit. So basically it means I own him, right? Or, you know, he's, he's my servant. Doesn't have to mean that uh, a servant of God means any human is part of God. This is does not mean that. And then he mentions, which means he sent to her the Holy Spirit, which is part of Jesus. But the thing is that the Holy Spirit um, gave the glad tidings of to Mary. But the Holy Spirit did not go inside Mary. The other thing was that the spirit Allah blew into her from his spirit but this spirit that is mentioning here is angel Gabriel and how can we prove that the Ruh meaning the Holy Spirit is uh, Gabriel well we can see here that to the, when Allah is saying to Prophet Muhammad in Quran chapter 26 verse 192 to 195 Allah says and indeed the Quran is the revelation of the Lord of the wor worlds the trustworthy spirit has brought it down upon your heart O Muhammad that you may be the uh, of the warners in a clear Arabic language 
So basically, who do we know that the one who sent the Quran to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It is Jibreel, and he sent it down upon his heart. Uh, how do we know this? Because if we go to Surah Al-Baqarah, okay, if Ruh Al-Quddus was separated from the regular angels in the Quran, doesn't mean Jibreel was no angel. Because here it says, كل من كان عدوا لجبريل فإنه نزله على قلبه. Chapter two of the Quran, verse ninety-seven. Say, O Muhammad, whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, it is none but he who has brought the Quran down upon your heart. O Muhammad, by permission of Allah. So the Holy Spirit descends to Allah. Uh, sorry, the Holy Spirit descends to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم or to prophets and messengers or on the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr. By the permission of Allah, which means that the angels, in another verse, they do not disobey Allah in whatever he, they, uh, he commands them, and they do what they are told, confirming that which was before you as guidance and good tidings to believers. So, Gabriel was the one who brought down the Quran upon your heart, O Muhammad. So, in this meaning, that Gabriel, here, the, the, the Holy Spirit here that he was mentioning, is and indeed the Quran is a revelation to you of the Lord of the worlds that trustworthy spirit has brought it down upon your heart, O Muhammad. So he brought down the Quran, who? The trustworthy spirit. So who is the trustworthy spirit? Whoever is an enemy to Gabriel is none but he who has brought down the Quran upon your heart. So clearly Gabriel was the... And he says, oh, okay, so why the Holy Spirit is separated from the angels? Well, sometimes... Allah needs to separate them too because there's many angels. We also know in the Quran there's the angel called Malik who is the keeper of the gate, gates of hellfire. And then the people will call on and say, Oh Malik, tell your Lord to, you know, you know, uh, give us a break from punish, punishment of the fire for some days. So there's also Ridwan who is the gatekeeper of um, paradise. There's also Israfil, the one who blows the trumpet before judgment day. Um, with also the angel Malak al Maut, the angel of death. So we see that Allah is mentioning clearly that the Jews were um, um, enemies of Gabriel, okay, and Michael. So Allah says in the next verse, whoever is an enemy to Allah and his angels and his messengers and Gabriel. Gabriel is part of the angels, but see, Allah also separated him from regular other angels because each, each angel has a strength. But Allah is specifically mentioning Gabriel and My Michael from the angels, which clearly says that the Holy Spirit is separated sometimes from the angels because it is said that the Holy Spirit is um, to, to, to define what the Holy Spirit really is, to show clearly that the Holy Spirit is something else because it is the one who sends the revelations down. And even Allah says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفَّةً That on that day, the Holy Spirit and the angels will be in one line in one group which proves that the angels are in one group they do not speak except for one who Allah um, you know gives command to uh, so in one they will be in the same group they will be in the same line so this means that the Holy Spirit is an angel and yes the angels do have souls and spirit in them because Allah created them from souls in the Quran, no one, everything shall perish except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even the angels perish as well. So he's basically saying that uh, Jesus in the Quran, he was the only one who was able to create and the one who would breathe into the bird and becomes a living bird and the one who heals the leper, who heals the blind and who uh, raises the dead. This Similarly, does not mean that Jesus is God because Jesus was only able to do these things, these particular things, these miracles. But uh, Jesus was not able to direct the wind like Prophet Solomon in the Quran. Jesus was not able to split the sea like Moses. Jesus was not able to make a snake turn into a stick turn into a snake. So he was given, and all these what Jesus did is bi idnillah in the permission of Allah. So Jesus says, "I create for you." From clay that which is like the form of a bird then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by permission of God uh, if we say that Jesus was doing you know raising the dead by the permission of God without the permission of God he couldn't do anything so this basically means he's not God um, in other words we see for example in the Bible Paul was able to uh, Paul and Peter were and the disciples of Jesus, he told them to go to the lost sheep of Israel and heal the sick, 
the leper and the blind and to also raise the dead in the name of Jesus so basically it does not mean that if they are able to raise the dead that means they are gods because they are basically doing something that no one can do except God God was the only one who can raise the dead I, you, other prophets, messengers cannot raise the dead without God's permission so basically this is the same thing if you look in the Bible here in Acts chapter 20 of the Bible verse 9 the Bible says as Paul spoke on and on a young man named Atticus sitting on the window sill became very drowsy finally he fell sound asleep and dropped three stories meaning three floors to his death below Paul went down threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him and he said to the people don't be alarmed he said he is alive so the man died but then when Paul put himself on him the man became alive so Paul raised the dead does that mean he's to God no it does not mean that in Matthew chapter 10 of the Bible verse 5 to 8 Bible says these 12 Jesus these 12 meaning the disciples the 12 disciples of Jesus said he Jesus sent uh, out with the following instructions do not go among the genitals or enter any town of the Samaritans go rather to the lost sheep of Israel as you go procla proclaim this message the kingdom of heaven has come near heal the sick raise the dead cleanse those who have leprosy drive out demons freely you have received uh, freely give so basically Jesus told them that oh you can go and raise the dead he told his 12 disciples that you can go you can heal the sick and basically the Bible says that no one can heal the sick except God so if um, uh, someone takes a medication for example and God does not permit him to get healed he will not be healed uh, no one can drive out demons without God's you know command no one can raise the dead without God's command so the disciples of Jesus raised the dead they did something that only God can do does that mean that they are also God it does not mean that and basically second Kings chapter 13 verse 21 and it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold they spied a band of man and they cast the man into the uh, sepulchre of Elite, Elisha and when the man was let down in the grave and touched the bones of Elisha he revived and stood up on his feet so the dead man they were going to bury a man but when that man touched the bones of Elisha he revived and stood up on his feet he became alive it does not mean that Elisha is God or his bones you know are powerful and they can raise the dead Right, which means that his God does not mean that because God permitted that Elisha, if he touches Elisha's bones, he would be raised to the dead. He would raise from the dead. Yes, and the Holy Spirit does not uh, disobey God, which means it's it's Gabriel, the angel, which is proof that he is an angel because in Quran chapter 66 verse 6, Allah says, "O you who have believed, protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones." over which as are appointed angels harsh and severe they do not disobey Allah in what he commands them but do what they are commanded uh, Quran chapter 97 verse 4 Allah says the angels and the spirit descend therein by permission of the Lord for every matter so they descend by the permission of God they do not by the command of God so they do not disobey God okay as you can see the angels harsh and severe they do not disobey Allah in what he commands them but they do what they are commanded so this proved that the Holy Spirit is Gabriel angel Gabriel which was separated from the regular types of angels because there are a billion of angels that we don't know and we don't know their names but we know that one of the angels is called Ruh al Qudus, meaning Gabriel because he was the one responsible for sending down the revelations and also as we said that Salat al-Fajr is mentioned and Salat al-Isha is mentioned and as we said that he also mentioned that Salat al-Maghrib is mentioned and Salat al-Dhuhr you know said that Rabbika you know even in the, the, the noon time and Salat al-Wusta meaning the middle prayer is Asr so these are five prayers mentioned in the Quran so basically Jesus was not able to do uh, other miracles for example for example when he was the devil was trying to test him Jesus says you should not test the Lord your God and he was referring to that you should not test Yahweh your God he was not referring to himself he said you should not test your God to show you a miracle through me like God showed through every prophet so there are different miracle signs 
Jesus, for example, when he was hungry and he went, he saw a fig tree. Instead of creating figs on it, he cursed it. So basically, imagine if Jesus was the creator, he could not create figs. You know, why would he leave himself hungry and not create figs on the fig tree uh, to feed himself while he was hungry? And this is what Allah says in the Quran that Jesus and Mary they both ate food and they walked in the marketplaces and Allah says look how we show them the signs and look how they keep stubbornly turning away so basically Jesus when he was uh, in Matthew chapter 12 verse 39 Bible says um, but Jesus replied only an evil adulterous generation would de demand a miraculous sign but the only sign I will give them is a sign of the prophet Jonah so why did Jesus only give them the sign to these particular people these signs they asked him for example for other signs other than Jonah but he only gave them one sign which is about prophet Jonah why couldn't he do the others at the same time and basically John chapter 3 verse 2 Bible says after dark one evening he came to speak with Jesus one guy came to speak to Jesus he says Rabbi meaning Lord and usually the term Lord um, does not refer to God because it means that even the rabbis are called rabbis which means the Lord's the highest people uh, so and even in the Quran uh, Joseph says in the Rabbi Ahsanu Matwa meaning that he was refer he was not referring to Rabb meaning Allah he was referring to a Lord of the house meaning Al Aziz the one that Joseph was living with so Jesus says uh, so guys said Rabbi he said we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you so you can clearly see that Jesus was not able to do miracles by his own but by God because God was with him if God was not with him he would not have helped him and basically every prophet in the Bible as well God was with them like Moses and he because God was with Moses he was able to perform signs like turning uh, breaking the stone with his stick with his wooden stick in half so that water comes out he was able to split the sea by God's permission and he was also able to turn his stick into a snake by God's permission uh, and none other than a prophet can uh, do that because a prophet sent by God you know a true prophet can do that so he was basically saying that after Abraham's death, according to the Bible, God blessed Isaac. Ismail left with his mother Hajar. Nothing mentioned about Ishmael. When you actually go to the Bible, Genesis chapter 17, verse 20, Bible says, And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Now the term, the Christians say that Ishmael means God heard. Right? Uh, his name, Ishmael's name means God heard. So the one who uh, God heard his prayers. As for Ishmael, I have heard you, God says, I will surely bless him and I will make him fruitful and will, you know, when God was saying to Abraham that as for your son Ishmael, I, will, I have heard you, the supplication of you, I will surely bless him, I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers, he will be the father of 12 rulers, you know, Kedor was one of them, and I will make him into a great nation. He also says that, add to this that Muhammad's father is unknown. How was Muhammad's father unknown? Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad was clearly called Muhammad ibn Abdullah. His father's name was Abdullah. He was known, I, his father's name was called Abdullah ibn Abdullah. Father, right? So Prophet Muhammad's name was Ab, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib. Okay? Um, and now I clearly showed him, okay, look at your Bible, for example. Jesus is unknown. He is unknown who is mother. You know, for example, his God says in the Bible that his his mother, Jesus' genealogy is David and Bathsheba. Because basically, remember when David had adultery with Bathsheba? Uh, David, the, you know, who's considered a prophet in Christianity, committed adultery with Bathsheba, a married woman. And he afterwards, he killed her husband, Uriah the Hittite, in war. Uh, you know, he put him, he tried to plot against him, put him in the front line to be killed. Just so to... Um, you know, to um, to not let him know that he actually raped Bathsheba. And through them, through the adulterous affair with David and Bathsheba, Jesus came through their line. Okay, through David and Bathsheba. And plus Tamar also is through the line of David and Bathsheba, which means Jesus came through Tamar, which means that Tamar was also a prostitute, an adulterous prostitute. Which clearly shows that David had many wives and he did commit adultery before marrying Bathsheba. So he, when Bathsheba was already married, her husband was at war. 
David basically went to her, uh, sent for her, sent her to his house, to his palace. Uh, you know, he basically had adultery with her, and he sent, and she came up to her, she says, I am pregnant. And David wanted to, you know, he did not want Uriah the Hittite to notice that his wife was slept with David, okay? So he basically killed Uriah the Hittite. Here it says, for example, also that God did not punish David, he punished the wives of David, all his wives, and he made the, the next door neighbor sleep with his wives. And the, in, you know, everyone's uh, broad daylight. In Second Samuel chapter 12 of the Bible, verse 11, Bible says, This is what the Lord says to David. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. And he will sleep with your wives in broad day daylight. You did it in secret with Bathsheba, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. So all Israel was were able to see. Uh, David's wives being raped by David's neighbor, which is another proof that it is unknown, you know, who the father of Jesus is re really is, because is it really David or is it really the neighbor? And basically, um, the Bible says that Ishmael, uh, sorry, that Abraham loved Sarah more than he loved Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. And what does the Bible say if someone lo has two wives but loves one more than the other? What should he do to the one who to his unloved wife? In Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 15 to verse 17, the Bible says, If a man has two wives and he loves one but not the other, and both bear him sons, but the firstborn is the son of the wife, uh, uh, you know, the firstborn is the son of the wife, which meaning Ishmael was the firstborn, okay, because Ishmael was older than Isaac, of the wife he does not love, so Abraham did not love Hagar, uh, which was the mother of Ishmael, the first when he wills his property to his sons, so when A uh, Abraham died, when he wants to will, he keep write a will of to property between his two sons, he must not give the rights of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves in preference to his actual firstborn. The son of the wife he does not love. He must acknowledge the son of his unloved wife and as the firstborn by giving him a double share of all he has. That son is the first sign of his father's strength. The right of the firstborn belongs to him. So the right of the firstborn of the son of the unloved wife, meaning Hagar, which is Ishmael, the son of Hagar, the unloved wife of Abraham. And he was the firstborn, you know, son, Ishmael. Abraham should give double share of all he has to his firstborn. That son is the first sign of his father's strength. The right of the firstborn belongs to him. And basically the Bible as well says, 1 Samuel chapter 2 to 6, the Bible says, The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. Deuteronomy chapter 32 of the Bible, verse 39, the Bible says, See now that I, meaning Yahweh, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, Myself am he. There is no God besides me. I put to death and I bring life. So basically, God, he raises the death. He was the only one who raised the dead. And he brings life. I have wounded and I will heal. He is the only one who heals. And no one can deliver out of my hand. So no one can uh, run away from me against my torment or against my punishment. Basically, it shows that nothing can happen without the will of uh, God. So if Paul and Peter were, doing, were raising the dead, they were doing the actions of God. It does not mean they are gods, but they were doing it as a miracle and in the name of uh, God and by the permission of God. So basically, we're saying that in John 10:30, it says that Jesus said, "I and the Father are one." Proves that Jesus is the Father, and they are both God. This is basically wrong because in John 17, uh, chapter 17, verse 21, the Bible says Jesus was praying to his Father, and he was saying that all of them, the disciples and his followers may be one father just as you are in me and i am in you may they also the disciples be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me so the term here may they also be in us does that mean may they also be gods no when jesus was saying like i am in you father and you are in me and like we are one let them also be one so it's not referring to anything have to do with the trinity because that would mean that the disciples are different people and the, they all have different strength, different power. Uh, basically, they are not uh, all as one human.
right so similarly we can see father just you are like you are in me and i am in you may they also be in us so it does not mean that may they also be gods if jesus was saying you are in me and i am in you it probably means mostly that oh that because you love me and i love you this is what it mostly means may they also be loved to us and we can also see that in john chapter 5 verse 30 bible says jesus says i can do nothing on my own i judge as god tells me so jesus worships another god and follows another god therefore my judgment is just because i carry out the will of the one who sent me so jesus is judging and giving the rules of god not his own rules right not my own will he doesn't carry out his own will or his own rules so this cannot do miracles or anything else without all without the things that only god permits him to do so basically here you can see matthew chapter 4 verse 3 to 7 the tempter meaning the devil came to him jesus and said if you are the son of god tell these stones to become bread jesus answered it is written man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes out from the mouth of god so jesus was not able to do this miracle does that mean he is not a prophet for example no and most christians are saying that muhammad there were certain miracles he did not do when the people asked him about it like to see allah and the angels or to make this and that he showed them the miracles that allah ordered him to show like the spring of the moon or uh, uh, water coming out of his between his fingers right and etc more other miracles of the you know the the pulpit crying right so it's different then does not mean that muhammad is not a prophet if god only made him do certain miracles and he was also saying that um that jesus said to his father that you should glorify me meaning the father should pray to jesus you know glorification as in terms of praying well actually glorification can also mean to honor it does not really mean when jesus was saying oh father honor me or glorify me meanings to to honor me right in jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 bible says new king james version then out of them meaning the descendants of jacob shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry god said i will multiply them meaning the descendants of jacob and they shall not diminish i will also glorify them and they shall not be small so he says if that's the ter if that's the case here that god glorified the people of jacob does that mean that people the descendants of jacob are gods that god is worshiping them so john chapter 8 verse 57 bible says jesus replied if i glorify myself my glory means nothing my father whom you claim as your god is the one who glorifies me so the one who honors me because jesus cannot go basically honor his uh, own self yeah and you can see for example um luke chapter 18 verse 19 jesus was not perfect like the father he was not great as the father he was not good as the father and Jesus said to him, to a guy who was saying, good teacher, he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Now, most Christians say that this means that Jesus was good, uh, but he was saying to the man that he was trying to show him that I, God, am the good alone. This is not true because if someone calls you stupid and you say, uh, why do you call me stupid? The only one is stupid is you alone, right? So this means that you are not referring to yourself that you are stupid when you say, why do you call me stupid? You are trying to say, that I am not stupid, so why are you calling me stupid? This is exactly what it means here. So Jesus was basically saying, I am not good. And we can also explain that Jesus did not know the hour. And we can also explain that Jesus was not as great as the Father. Right? So he is different, clearly different. And he also says in John chapter 11, verse 25, that Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet he shall uh, live right basically here it says that jesus is trying to say he's trying to speak metaphorically which many christians misunderstand when jesus says that i am the resurrection and i am the life meaning those who believe in him will have eternal life in their spirit because those who believe in jesus for example uh, they will will die they won't have like eternal life literally meaning in the flesh but they have eternal life in the spirit so when they die their spirit does not die only their flesh dies which clearly means that those who believe in Jesus uh, will be resurrected, right? Those who are who didn't believe in Jesus before, like Paul, and used to be bad people, like because Paul was a murderer as well, the Apostle Paul, when they believed in Jesus, this is what is meant. When he believed in Jesus, that means his spirit came back to life, 
he has spiritually had life, right? Eternal life, which does not mean that he will live forever in the flesh, but in the spirit. So that's what it means here. Uh, you know, and you can clearly see John chapter 14 of the Bible, verse 28. The Bible says, you heard me say, Jesus says, you heard me say, I am going away and I am not coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Jesus is saying that Father is greater than him, so he can't be the same as the Father, or he cannot be God. And that the, the Father was separate from him, because he said, I am going to the Father. So the Father was already there, and Jesus was already there, two separate people. So he said, I am going to him. So he was not in him at first, but he was going to him. So this means they are two separate, different deities. We can see also in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 of the Bible, um, but about that day or hour, meaning judgment day, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, meaning Jesus does not know the hour, but only the Father, only Yahweh, the Father of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 27, the Bible, verse 7, the Bible says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust, meaning Adam, of the ground, formed a man from dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became, and the man became a living being. So does that mean the breath or the spirit, the breath of life, meaning the spirit of life? Does that mean that when God breathed into him from his spirit, into his nostrils, the breath of life? Does that mean Adam is part of God because he has part of God in him? It does not mean that. And according to the Bible, all the prophets, Adam and David, they are all called the sons of God. So it's not only Jesus called the son of God. So basically Jesus is saying John chapter 11 verse 26 and whoever lives by believing in me will never die Do you believe this? So he is saying everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die Do you believe this Martha? He was talking with Martha and she said yes Lord She answered I believe that you are the Christ you know exact etc etc And basically you can see that the verse before that this is what Jesus meant that by I am the resurrection did not, did not mean that I resurrect people or I am God so I resurrect people He was given the power by God to resurrect people but does not mean that he is one resurrects He is not literally the one who resurrects people from death Because in John chapter 11 verse 25 Jesus said to her to Martha I am the resurrection and the life The one who believes in me will live even though they die So this is the meaning of resurrection meaning that those who were disbelievers uh, or those who uh, did not yet, when Jesus, before Jesus came to them, when Jesus came and they believed in him, their souls were resurrected and they became, the spirit became living again. And Jesus says, even though they die, even though that you will die, you will still be alive, eternal life meaning in spirit. So you will not be, your spirit will not die, you will not be destroyed, for example. You will not be in hell, you will be in eternal life meaning paradise. And yeah, this is the end of it. I just wanted to share this uh, debate here. And uh, we can clearly see that uh, here is all the here is the video here. Christian Prince destroys Muhammad hijab that I made, and this is under the comments here. You can find it under this comment here. You can find the whole debate, man, Ahmed Didat, and you know he was very good in making arguments. You can see, for example, here an atheist. Asked Ahmed Didat, how would you feel if you died and discovered that the hereafter was a lie? Ahmed Didat said, it is not worse than when you die and discover that the hereafter is the truth. SubhanAllah, this guy had so much knowledge and so much wisdom that he knew how to respond. And he really inspired me, alhamdulillah. And Imam Malik said, rahimahullah, Imam Malik said, what that whatever is done for the sake of Allah will stay forever a legacy or a legend and the owner of that legacy or legend will always stay in the people's hearts and minds and memories but whatever is done to other than God will perish and it will not be remembered and not be a legacy nor will be famous